Are you afraid that someone will use an AI detector on your work and label you a fraud and a charlatan and that's why you're nervous about getting into AI? Well, we're gonna talk about that in this video. Stick around. All right, everyone, we're talking about a somewhat sensitive subject for some people and I see a lot of misinformation about this particular topic about whether it's important to worry about AI detectors, whether you shouldn't worry about it, and everything in between. We're gonna talk about that today, and specifically, we're gonna talk about some of the different fears that you might have toward AI detectors and what that actually means for, for authors. So th the first one that I hear a lot is that um, you might be worried about AI detectors because you're writing an academic paper and you're worried that it will be that you will be found out that you used AI for that academic paper. And to that I will say, yeah, you should be worried about AI detectors because this is a specific use case where you should probably not be using them unless the assignment specifically involves using ChatGPT for the assignment, which to all the teachers out there that are incorporating ChatGPT and other AI tools into your curriculum, I applaud you do more of that because this is the kind of education we need to teach our kids. We like to teach our kids good math, but we still give them a calculator for most things. And that is what we are going to be looking at with AI in the future. Um, so, but if that isn't the case and you're not using ChatGPT in your curriculum, then yes, uh, don't use ChatGPT for your academic papers. Make sure to be honest and, not, and ethical in all things. And you should, in fact, be worried about AI detectors. Um, the second one that I hear a lot is you think that we, we need to fool these detectors to get content ranking on Google. And the, I think the logic behind this is people think that Google is going to see that a page was created with AI content and then immediately say, oh, this isn't a real content. We should unlist these people or or bump them down in the rankings and this is actually not true google has specifically said that it does not ding based on whether it uh, the content is ai produced or not it does so based on the merit of that content and there are absolutely ways that you can use ai to create not only good content but original content as well people don't think you can use AI to write original content, you absolutely can. I could tell it to write a personal story about myself that I have never told any person before. All I have to do is give it a few key details and then tell it to write that thing out. And it can usually do a, a decent job and, and then I can edit it to my liking and put it up. And that was created with AI, 100% original content. So worrying about content ranking for Google is, is not something you need to worry about. Uh, number three, you're afraid that your book will get taken down on Amazon. I have heard rumors, but they're really nothing but rumors of people getting their books taken down on Amazon and they think this is the cause. I guarantee that this is not a priority for Amazon. Why? Because Amazon's setting up their own AI tools right now so that you will be able to use AI I wouldn't even be surprised if uh, AI gets incorporated into Alexa real soon in some ways that would allow you to create your own books just using Alexa. You give it commands and it tells you a story that is completely made up on the spot. Amazon is pro AI. That is absolutely true. And there is absolutely no reason why they would shoot themselves in their own foot by saying you can't post AI generated things on their platform because that's just not the way they operate. If it makes them money, they don't care. So that is not something that you need to worry about. Number four, you're afraid of naysayers. Now this is a somewhat legitimate concern. There have been a couple of witch hunts out there, people being accused both accurately and falsely of using AI in their writing, people demanding that you put up some kind of disclaimer saying that your book was written with AI. In my experience readers don't really care it's really just certain a small subset of authors that care about this sort of thing but you might be worried that they might blow it into something and 
um, that's that's definitely a valid concern. The problem is, I think it's just as valid a concern for people who did not write their books with AI. Those people are just as much in danger of being accused of this by the wrong person that maybe you, you know, maybe your book is beating somebody else's book and they just get upset at you um, for having a better selling book than them or beating them in an Amazon category or something. And so they come out and accuse you of using AI and making a big whole fuss about it. And so um, there are a number of ways to get ahead of this. It's my opinion that eventually no one's going to care and no one will be able to tell. Uh, but right now, if you're if you're not doing a lot of heavy editing, especially on something like a fiction book, it is something that can kind of be identified, and especially with a good tool to as an AI detector, uh, someone could figure it out. And so what I might consider doing, and I haven't quite made up my mind on this, if I actually want to do it or not, but that is actually putting an AI disclaimer in the front of your book somewhere. This could actually be a really great opportunity to educate people about what AI does and the role it plays in writing because most people have an idea. They think it's just you push a button and that's it. And there's so much more to that as any of the videos on this channel will tell you. And so uh, I do think there is an opportunity to put a disclaimer in your book, at least for now. I think maybe eventually it won't be needed. Uh, here's a template that uh, I've used. I've taken this from a, the from a template in Jay Thorne's book on writing with ChatGPT, which I highly recommend. Definitely go check that out. I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, I, but I took what he wrote and adapted it to my own liking here. So, uh, so this is what I would put in a book. It says, some elements of this book were created with the assistance of artificial intelligence. Assistance means that it was used as a creative tool, much as a writer might use writing prompts or a, or a writing partner to brainstorm and improve the writing. The final story, including all edits and narrative decisions, is entirely my own. I hope you enjoy this blend of human and AI creativity. And I, I especially like the bit about narrative decisions because that is 100% ours, even if we cho choose to accept what the AI gives us wholesale, that's still a narrative decision. And uh, those are the kind of things that we need to put into this. And so I, I just thought this would be a good kind of disclosure and a good opportunity to actually teach people about what it looks like when you're writing with AI. All right, number five is you want to make sure nothing is plagiarized. This is another, I think, valid concern with AI. Um, and AI detectors, a lot of them also have plagiarism detectors. And AI, just the way it works is it's not actually going to plagiarize something. It can't really do that without being specifically prompted to do so. And so since it can't inherently do that, the reason it does sometimes happen is entirely by chance. There might be passages where you're like, ah, oh, this is, this is kind of too close to something else or, or what have you. And this is especially true if you're using someone's specific style. You might see little things pop up here and there. And so it might be good to run some of your work through a either a plagiarizer or a plagiarism detector or an AI detector that also does plagiarism, which there are a few. And actually, I would like to highlight one of those, and it's called originality.ai. I do believe that this is the best AI detector uh, out there right now. It's the one I personally use. I don't use it often, but it's actually really cheap. And I do use it for plagiarism detection. Uh, it's one of the cheapest ways to do plagiarism detection. Um, I put $20 on there because it uses a credit system. I put $20 on there when I first signed up. And I still haven't run out of the credits that those $20 gave me. And so it does get go a long way. And I would highly recommend it if you are worried or, or you just want to see what it looks like and um, how well it can detect your work versus um, the AI's work. Because sometimes it can produce false positives. It can get things wrong. It is getting better every day. It's a lot better than it used to be. Uh, there used to be all kinds of trick tips and tricks on how to, how to fool originality.ai. None of those work anymore. Uh, you can go through the archives of YouTube and find a whole bunch of videos about it and then try it yourself 
they do not work anymore. So it is really good at what it does. The only thing I would say is maybe a, a slight issue with it is that it does produce false positives fairly strongly. Uh, you can, anyway. Uh, so this is the one I would use and I'll just go ahead and open it up for you right now. And once you're inside, you can come over here to my content scans, start a new scan. And we're gonna go here to ChatGPT. I just went ahead and generated a completely 100% AI article. I did use some prompts to try and make it a decent uh, quality article um, using one of my prompts that I use for articles, but it's still 100% generated by AI. I have not put any extra input into this at all. We'll put this into here, say scan now. And it says this scan will cost 10 credits. And you'll notice I still have over a thousand credits up here in the top. And that's, you know, like I said, I put $20 into this and it's still able to, to scan these words. It's about 400 words um, for 10 credits. Uh, so it's really good. 100% AI. It knows. Um, and so that's always useful. Then we can also look at plagiarism and hey, look, nothing is plagiarized, which is great, even though it is 100% AI. Uh, and then they also added this readability score here based on the Flesh Kincaid Reading Ease score, which I've talked about in past videos. It's one of the things you can use AI to do is increase that score. It's got a good readability score, it looks like. Um, so there are a lot of things that this tool is useful besides just AI detection. And so I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, I do have a link below. It is an affiliate link, but as I have mentioned in other videos, I only recommend affiliates that I personally use, and I do use this one, uh, mostly just as a curiosity, but I do use it, and I've used it mostly for plagiarism, and then this readability score is also very useful recently, so definitely check that out, and I'll see you in the next video.